Hey there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm James Daniels, an engineer on the Firebase team. I am joined by Minko, a colleague on the Angular team. Hello, everyone. My name is Minko Getchev. I'm a developer programs engineer on the Angular team at Google. Today, we're going to develop an application with Angular and Firebase. In general, we're going to build a Kanban board with different tasks that we can move across three different states. We can move them from a backlog to in progress and finally to complete it. Now, before we jump in, let's talk a little bit about the technologies we're using and the tools that can make your job easier. First and foremost, we're building a web application, so we need a place to host it. That's where the aptly named Firebase Hosting comes in. Firebase Hosting is a great product for storing static web assets. It puts everything behind a CDN, provides us with an SSL certificate, and we can even point our own domain at it once we're ready to go live to the world. Next, we need a database. This is where Firestore comes in. Cloud Firestore is a highly scalable NoSQL database that has client-side SDKs, allowing us to write directly from our web application code securely without the need to spin up API servers. Further, the SDK itself allows you to keep your client's state in sync with the server using real-time listeners. This significantly cuts down on the complexity of building a modern reactive interface. Now, let's spend a moment on tooling. We have a few options that'll influence our choices. The Firebase CLI is an NPM module that gives us the ability to push files to Firebase hosting, deploy cloud functions, security rules, and more via an easy to use command line interface. This is how many of our developers choose to interact with the hosting products. Next, there are web development frameworks that provide their own CLI experience and have hooks that allow developers to integrate with them. Notable examples here include Angular and Ember.js, whose CLIs can become Firebase aware using SDKs built by the Firebase team. The Emberfire library, for instance, makes a connection between the Firebase CLI and Ember, allowing developers to build and deploy their app with a tooling that they're already familiar with. Next, we have the Firebase Hosting API, a REST API that enables programmatic deployments to Firebase Hosting. While admittedly a bit more manual, it gives you complete control over your release pipeline and can be consumed in environments that aren't running Node.js or don't have existing command line interfaces. There's some great integrations here too. Glitch and StackBlitz, for instance, both have deploy to Firebase capabilities built on top of this API. That's the high level on the tooling options available to us right now. Perhaps there's an integration you'd like to see, but doesn't exist today, whether it be your favorite build toolchain, editor, continuous deployment pipeline. And hey, maybe you'll be the one to build it. Now that we've talked a bit about the technology choices available to us here, I'm eager to start building our app. Let's jump over to Minko, who will get us going. So with Angular and Firebase, we're going to build this Kanban board. First, we're going to create a new Angular CLI project. For the purpose to build the actual user interface of the app, we're going to add Angular Material and the Angular CDK. Right after that, we're going to develop our application's features. And finally, we're going to just add the Angular Fire package to our Angular CLI workspace so that we can introduce some real-time capabilities and deploy our application to Firebase Hosting. First things first, let us create a new Angular CLI workspace. For the purpose, use the engine new command specifying a project name. We will not need the Angular router, and here we're going to use just CSS. This command will scaffold the project and install all of its dependencies. As a next step, let us add Angular Material. Installing the package with npm will not do the entire trick, so we're going to use the ng-add command instead. 
it will not only install Angular material, but also trigger the NGS schematics, which will integrate the module with our application. First by allowing us to select a theme and adding the associated styles to the project, it will also add a global material typography and import the browser module in the app module, and all of this is going to happen just automatically. Notice that the ng-add command added the Angular CDK to package.json as well, since it is a dependency of Angular material. Now let us quickly develop the layout of the application. We'll first open the app component HTML and delete its entire content. At the top of the template, we'll need to add a matte toolbar. Inside the toolbar, let us add a local fire department icon and next to it set the title of the app, which is Kanban Fire. When we go back to the console, run ng-surf and, well, here we're going to see just a bunch of errors. This happened because we forgot to import the components that we're actually using from Angular Material in our application. Now let's do that. We'll first import Matt's toolbar module from the Angular Material toolbar module. Next, we'll add it to the list of imports in app module. We'll do the exact same thing for Matt icon module. Finally, let us set the color of the toolbar to the primary color of our theme. We can now preview what we just did. As a next step, let us add three columns or swim lanes representing the different state a task could be in. In the template of the app component, we'll create a column for the backlog. The backlog will be a material card and inside of it, we're going to show the individual items from our to-do array by using the ng4 directive. We'll do the exact same thing for the progress and the done columns. We should now improve the layout of the application. First, we'll wrap the column in a container wrapper. And next, we will add a list class to the individual columns. Finally, just add item class to the cards showing the individual tasks. In the styles of the app component, we'll use Flexbox in the container wrapper and set its margin top to 20 pixels. Each column will have 400 pixel width, margin right 25 pixel, and a solid gray border with one pixel width. And of course, a minimum height of 60 pixels. Yep, that just looks fine now. Items will have margin bottom 10 pixels, a cursor pointer, and box sizing border box to make sure that their sizes do not change when we start dragging the individual tasks. Oh, see, now we're getting another set of errors in the console because we are missing an import. Let us quickly add the math card module to the app module. We also need to declare the to do, in progress, and done arrays in the app component. Let us also add a few items to the to-do array. And here we are. Now we see three lists and we have items in the first one of them. To implement the drag and drop functionality, all we need to do is just to use a couple of directives from the drag drop module in the Angular CDK. Let us import it in the app module. After that, we'll need to update the cards representing the individual columns. First add CDK drag, to the math card representing the task, and to each one of the columns, we'll add the CDK drop list directive. After that, we'll handle the CDK drop list dropped event by invoking the drop method passing the event object. Next, we'll set their CDK drop list data to the corresponding array from the app component. And now let us format the template with Prettier. After that, we'll reference each drop list using a template variable. We'll use backlog list for the list of to-do items, in progress list for the list of in progress tasks, and done list for the list of completed tasks. Finally, we'll connect each drop list with the other two so that we can transfer tasks between them. Let us implement the drop method in the app component. 
The event object is of type CDK drag drop. It contains the previous and the current containers. We will need to handle two cases here, reordering tasks in the current column and moving tasks across different columns. If the user is reordering tasks, we will use the move items in array function coming from the CDK, passing the container data, previous index and the current index. Alternatively, we want to use the transfer array item by passing the data from the previous container, the data from the current container, the previous index, and the current index of the task. Now let us try the drag and drop functionality. Notice that there is a weird effect here. When we start dragging a particular item, we temporarily create a clone of it. To fix this, we will need to go to the app component CSS and declare the class CDK drag placeholder. Angular will apply it to the placeholder when we start dragging. To hide it, we will just set its opacity to zero. To improve the drop effect, we will just add 250 milliseconds transition to the CDK drag animating class. The only missing feature now before we go to the Firebase portion of this talk is to implement the functionality for adding new tasks. For the purpose, let us just wrap the container wrapper into another div element which will contain all the three different columns plus form for adding new tasks. Let us use the content wrapper class for this diff and add a few styles for it. In the app component CSS, make it width 1000 pixels and set its margin to auto so that we can center it. In the app component template, add a math form field, a math label inside of it with a value task name and an input with the math input directive on it, which handles enter key down events just invoking the add item method. Don't forget to import math input module in your app module to make sure that we have all the directives available. Inside the add item method in the app components controller, we just want to get the target HTML input element, push its value to the to-do list and reset it. Now we can add new items to our to-do list. So that was pretty much everything on the Angular side. Now James can show you how to add Firestore and deploy the application to Firebase hosting. Thanks for getting us rolling, Minka. Well, to uh, get Firebase in here, the first thing that we're going to want to do is add the Angular Fire library. So we'll just do ng add Angular Fire. This will actually install the Firebase packages, Firebase tools, everything that we need to put in real time capabilities and uh, deploy to Firebase hosting. So I'll link this to the project that I created for this. Now that we've added Angular Fire, let's pull in the modules we need. We'll first start with Angular Fire, and then we'll pull in the Angular Fire Store module. We'll initialize Angular Fire with our application's web app settings. You can get those from the Firebase console. Next, in our app component, let's actually inject Angular Fire Store. Then we can convert our task list to a Firestore collection. So we'll go ahead and get the collection to do. Then we'll grab the value changes from that. What that'll do is actually create an RxJS observable of the values in Firestore, and this will be a real-time connection. ID field, we'll, we'll go ahead and populate the item's ID into the task. We'll do the same for in progress and done. Now with that, let's go ahead and work on our new task. So instead of pushing to an array, we're actually gonna grab our Firestore collection and we're going to add to it. Now edit. So here, when we're deleting, we're actually gonna to wanna to, again, jump into that Firestore collection, grab the document ID, and then delete it. Otherwise, let's update it. And then we can get rid of all this. Finally, the drag and drop. 
So here we're actually going to want to do a transaction, right? This, this works in two pieces. So we'll go ahead and create a Firestore transaction. That'll take a promise. And in the promise, we're first going to delete the item from the prior collection, and then we're going to add it to the next collection. Now, finally, our data is actually observables now. So we're going to want to change our template code a bit. So we're going to want to point our CDK drop list data to the async. We're going to want to update that for the empty list check as well as the ng4. With that done, let's bring it up in the browser. We can do side by side here now that we're persisting in Firestore. I'm happy with this, so I'm going to go ahead and deploy it to Firebase Hosting. I can just call ng deploy since we added Angular Fire. This will actually use a schematic, reach into the Firebase tools, and build and deploy our site on hosting for us in one simple step. And we're live. If you're building tools for developers or just frameworks and you want to enable such path for your favorite framework, just like what we showed today with the Angular CLI and the Firebase schematics, just take a look at them. They are at github.com slash angular slash angularfire. You can develop a similar mechanics for your favorite technology so that you can enable developers to add real-time capabilities with Firestore and automated deployments to Firebase hosting. Thanks for joining us today. We were happy to demonstrate some of the new capabilities of Firebase hosting and our integration with the Angular CLI. If you'd like to dive a bit deeper in today's exercise, be sure to catch the code lab that Minko has developed for the summit. Links to this and more can be found in the description below. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase channel and make sure to catch the other great talks coming out of the Firebase Summit. Thank you for watching and happy coding. See you next time.